I got a D in English. In this video, I'm going to go through my GCSE results. I'm not doing this to brag or anything like that, but just to share what kind of results could get you, in my case, into Cambridge. And just because when I was doing my GCSEs, I was very curious to see what other people got and I would watch videos just like this. There's timestamps in the description so you can jump to the bits of the video you want to see. And hello, my name is Ilya and I'm a student at the University of Cambridge studying natural sciences. Okay, so I did the following 13 GCSEs. So there wasn't really a need for me to do 13 GCSEs and most people do 10 or 11, which is really enough. But two of my GCSEs were in languages I knew already or happened to have studied already. So I speak Dutch already because I used to live in a Dutch speaking country. So I did Dutch GCSE in year 10. I also did Latin GCSE in year 10 because my school didn't teach it as part of the curriculum. It was an after school kind of thing once a week. And for some reason they made us sit it in year 10. For me, that didn't work out too well. But anyway, so in year 10, I did Dutch and Latin GCSE. Dutch, I got an A star in. I kind of knew the language already, so I kind of felt a bit like cheating, but oh well. Latin, I don't know what happened, but I sat two papers. One of them I got a good A in, and the second paper I got a D. And on average, that added up to a B. I'm not sure how. But anyway, so I got an A star in Dutch and a B in Latin. It's kind of funny, for every exam I sat, six of them, they were either an A star, an A, or a D nothing in between. Okay, so now for my exams in year 11, these ones are the ones which actually mattered pretty much, no one cares about Latin or Dutch. So I did the standard set of like English, math, etc, science. I did also computing, design and history and French. I was predicted mostly A's and A stars, although I was predicted a C in history and I was at some point predicted a C in English language and literature as well. Interestingly, when I got my results in year 11, the first grade that I saw on my results page was a D. <laughs> so I got a D in English literature. I have no idea how that happened, but I've got a big D on my results page. So I got a D in English literature, but I got an A in English language. I got an A star in maths, A star in biology, A star in chemistry, A star in physics, A star in French, A star in further maths. And then in computing, design and history, I got A's. Interestingly, out of all the like 30 exams I sat, all of them were A stars and A's, but I got a D somewhere and a B somewhere, but no C's. I don't know why, I just, I just can't get C's. I either get less than a C or above. Okay, so so far I've got seven A stars, a B, a D, and four A's. You might be thinking, okay, surely he's now done with the video. No, so my grades actually changed. Out of the four A's I got at GCSE, three of them were just one mark off an A star, and I thought, okay, they can be remarked. So I remarked three of them, and I also remarked the D because I thought, surely I didn't actually get a D in this exam. Now this is where it gets interesting. In history, where I was predicted C, gone A, one mark off an A star, I got a remark in one of the papers, and it went up by exactly one mark. That one mark made me get an extra A star. So we're now at eight A stars, three A's, whatever, I, I don't even know. So I gained an A star by remarking history. But wait, there's more. I remarked my English language GCSE, which again was one mark off an A star, and that went up by exactly one mark. So I gained another A star. So we're now at nine A stars. And then for computing GCSE, I was quite bummed I didn't get an A star because I spent a lot of time on my coursework, like a ridiculous amount of time, but the actual exam itself I didn't do too well. So I remarked that exam and unfortunately it didn't go up. In fact, it went down by seven marks, but although it went down by seven marks, it still remained an A. So I didn't gain an A star, but I didn't lose anything. So anyway, now we've got nine A stars, two A's and a B and a D. So I remarked the D in English literature because I thought, okay, surely I didn't actually get a D. I got mostly A stars and I got an A, then A star in English language. How did I get a D in English literature? Well, I remarked it and the grade stayed exactly the same. I don't understand. So anyway, I got 90 stars, two A's, a B and a D. And I thought that's not going to look very good if I got a D. So in year 12, November year 12, I resat English literature GCSE. So after resetting the GCSE and 
not preparing too much for it. I don't really remember doing much work for it. I got my new results back and surprise, surprise, I got an A. So in conclusion, I've got nine A stars, three A's and a B. There's just a few more things I'd like to say. I wish I'd remarked a few more of my exams. I got a D in one of my design GCSE papers when I thought I shouldn't have got a D. So that and a few other papers I think were worth remarking. And in general, I would say it is definitely worth remarking if you're not sure, because you saw how out of the four things I remarked, three of them changed grade. I gained two A stars just by remarking papers. So it's worth it. And I think that if the grade changes, you actually get your money back. So I would say it is a good investment to get your papers remarked if you're not quite sure if that's right. Now, I had to research one of my GCSEs. I didn't, I didn't have to, but I chose to because I thought a D isn't very nice. I think in my case, because all my other grades were mostly good, it was quite obvious that something had gone seriously wrong with my exam. I don't even know what went wrong. Like, I thought the exam went well. So I think resetting it was a good idea. But if you have to reset a lot of GCSEs and you want to apply to Oxbridge or another top tier university, and you don't have a good excuse that might look bad on your application. And if you want to know what kind of GCSE grades you need to get into Oxford or Cambridge, please look at my previous video where I go through exactly that. Thank you for watching. In my next video, I'm going to go through the A-level grades you need to get into Oxford or Cambridge. And after that, I'm going to give you my A-level results. Thanks for watching.